think I don't have uh, a whole lot of time here. I got to get in the car and get to campus, but um, but uh, maybe I can just talk a little bit about the difference between matter and form. And so one of Aristotle's book is the physics, and this is a book. And this is where our notion of physics comes from, but, um, but the Aristotelian physics is very different from Newtonian physics that were taught in high school um, today. So uh, it's a little difficult to wrap your head around, but uh, I'll try to, try to do my best. And, and the first step is to understand this distinction between matter and form and, um, and, and although, and, and let me just say this, that although this may sound strange and not legitimately physics, uh, when you really think about it and understand Aristotle on his own terms, it's hard to argue against it, okay? It's just operating at a very philosophical abstract level where a lot of what we learn about physics in, in high school, you know, is, is based upon some, you know, dumbed down <laughs> uh, uh, notions about the way the world works, which of course with quantum physics shows, okay, that's to it's, it's not really like that. Uh, but, you know, we kind of, for younger students and just, you know, to provide a general basic education, we don't make physics like super deep and philosophical and get on in, down into all the nitty and gritty. But Aristotle was really thinking about this from a purely philosophical perspective and really thinking things through at, a, at fundamental levels. Um, so just keep that in mind that this does, it does work philosophically. And even, I would say, even in the face of uh, quantum mechanics, um, you know, it's, it stands up. Now, when Newtonian physics was considered, you know, the, the gospel, uh, to coin a phrase, um, Aristotelian physics was laughed at. But as we are very aware of now, Newtonian physics is very clumsy and, and gets a lot of things wrong at these fundamental philosophical levels. Okay. So, um, so substance, uh, and, and this is, you know, a key concept for Aristotle is this notion of substance. And a substance um, is something that can be referred to by the subject of a sentence. So we're think, he, he thinks a lot in terms of grammar, and this is a, and this is a philosophical uh, technique that remains very important even to this day is, is philosophers often focus on grammar because we tend to think that when we're, we say things and there's common notions and just a common sense way of saying things that the, what we say somehow reveals the truth, but sometimes we have to parse that language very closely and Aristotle was very much into this. But, um, so we have in, in grammar, we have the difference between the subject and the predicate. So the subject is like in, in a sentence like ducks quack. Ducks, that's the subject. Quack, that's, that's the predicate. The subject is what we're talking about. And, and the predicate is something that's predicated of the subject or it's something that modifies or tells us something about the subject. The subject is, is, is the, thing, the thing that we're interested in, and the predicate is what we're saying about that thing. Okay, so like ducks quack, very simple grammatical structure. But you could say, uh, the white ducks swim, and then white also modifies the subject. And so that's something uh, we could say the ducks are white, and then we're predicating whiteness to the ducks. 
Okay. Um, so there's this grammatical distinction. And then Aristotle wants to say, well, okay, when we speak about a subject, uh, that's, that's really what we mean by a thing that exists. And he calls this a substance. And he wants to call it a substance because it, it, it endures through all these changes because you might say the duck is yellow. And, and, and then later on when it grows up, you know, the little duckling is yellow, you say the duck is brown or the duck is speckled, right? Um, but it's the same duck. And so the substance is what endures over time through these changes of predicates or what, um, you know, he, he doesn't want to use just grammar as the terminology. So instead of subject, he says substance. And instead of predicate, he says quality. The predicates refer to qualities like yellow, white, speckled, um, or even uh, swimming, that's a, that's a quality. Um, and so uh, he, he wants to make this distinction. And then, and then what he argues is that the subject is composed of matter and form. And so there's some uh, material basis and the word for matter here is hule which just means like wood or stuff like just like just you know just stuff uh, the indeterminate uh, undifferentiated stuff and then the form and here form means like shape primarily literally uh, the, it's like the form in which the stuff is shaped you know, um, that's sort of the literal meaning, but, but Aristotle wants to say something a little different. And what he says is that matter and form come together in order to create uh, a substance. So a substance always has matter, uh, but it has to be matter that is formed, that has a form. And... Um, and form, I should say, also the Greek word is ideos. So it means it's very closely connected to our word for idea. Uh, but it's like the more visual than abstract idea, more of a visual idea, like a, a pattern. Um, so the matter does persist through these different changes and modifications and qualities, but um, but the matter but matter doesn't exist in a formless state. For it to be real, it has to have some form, and that's true. Anything that actually exists that's material has some shape. If it doesn't have shape, then it doesn't exist uh, in this material way, okay? Um, <clears throat> and so he's just separating out matter and form conceptually. These are conceptual uh, categories, but any material thing, any substance, and he wants to just call it a substance, any substance has to have these two aspects. It has some material basis but that material is in some sort of form, some sort of shape. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I say here that matter and form together yield an ontological substance. And ontological means having to do with existence. Okay, so ontological is just a fancy, fancy word for um, talking about existence. Okay.
And I think I'll just stop right there and then we'll get into the four causes and, and, um, and so on and so forth. But, uh, but I'll leave it at that for now and I'll see you later. <laughs>